You're a real chatty guy, they said back at base camp. Tag along with old Hatch there, they said. He's great company on a long old drive through the desert. Stilgar had spent all morning trying to get a response from the stone-faced Talon, who sat beside him in the navigator's position. Over two hours at the controls of another Trojan fuel transport in the tail end of a mile-long supply column heading north, always northward, in the wake of the slow and perilous advance of the 12th Talon Armoured Division. Nothing but dust and shadows ahead. The plan, your orders, and the unknown. Never a dull mile, they said. Seen the galaxy as Hatch. Plenty to tell to a good driver with a willing ear. Hadge made no reply. He was, as ever, reading. It looked like a primer. The small instructional volume given to every recruit in the service, often seen in the hands of the young, the shaken, or the condemned. Hadge was none of these. Reading anything good in there? Stilgar nudged. Any good jokes? Hadge raised an eyebrow. The infantryman's uplifting primer was not to be mocked. Much of what it contained was considered holy. Litanies and mantras to steal the resolve of the dutiful guardsman. Instruction on the proper care and use of his equipment, which it taught was the providence of the holy emperor himself. It must not be scorned. However, many facts printed within its covers were clearly amiss, and only the most naive and gullible man could possibly believe them. More than a few passages in the primer had drawn a wry smile between those in the know before now. Hadge lifted the text meaningfully and read aloud. I won't pretend this was easy, but it is vital. He began in a deep and sonorous voice that well suited the tone and import of his chosen passage. He read on. Vital to the Imperial's success on this world, perhaps to the entire Crusade. The enemy and their ambitions will be denied. If it takes every spark of our lives and every drop of our blood, we fight for the Emperor today. Fight as if we were standing at his side as his chosen bodyguard. Protect the men to your left and right as if they were the Emperor himself. Do not slacken, do not falter. Victory awaits you, and if not victory, then the glory of a brave death in the service of the Golden Throne of Terror. The Emperor will provide, if you are true. His hand guides us, his eyes watch over us, and even in death, he will bring us to him, and we shall sit in splendor at his side, beyond the Eternity Gate. Hadge made the sign of the Aquila and folded the little book in his lap. His was an air of peace. His soul's purpose was assured. Stilgar, not one to be impressed by such pious oratory, was nonetheless happy to have the Talon's attention at last, and he decided he might have a little fun. What's it say in there about the Xenos? The Tau, I mean. Stilgar tried to hide his smirk. He was baiting the Emperor-fearing Talon, but part of him was genuinely curious. It had been many a year since he had consulted his Primer on any topic. He knew better than to look for facts he could rely on in there. Hatch frowned as he flicked back through the well-thumbed pages, finding the entry he almost began to read, but then stopped short apparently thinking better of it. You might read it at your leisure, when we have repose. Hadge set the book on the dash and took a sudden interest in the navigational con. Come on, man, Stilgar encouraged. You read it so well. You should have been a commissar, fella. The entry is... Hadge was searching for the words. Unfit for oratory. He was clearly prevaricating. Ah, give it here. Stilgar snatched the volume up 
and holding it one-handed, forearm balanced upon the controls, he flicked to the section introducing the towel. The Trojan jolted and swerved as his attentions lapsed, but he righted their course, ignoring Hadge's protests, and began reading a section at random in his most authoritative tones. In battle, the Tau are disorganized and cowardly. They fight from a distance, and their poor aim makes this tactic ineffective. To compensate for their poor eyesight, they have developed acute hearing. Their eardrums are so sensitive that if you make a loud enough noise, for example by shouting the litany of death, it causes deafness and immediate confusion. Stilgard took stock of his audience's reaction. You know that sort of mucka Ali Gak, right? Hajj made no response. I mean, we know they can shoot pretty damn well, don't we? Stilgar was getting angry now, and Hajj's silence only fueled his fire. He flicked a page or two, landing on a picture of a Tau hammerhead. The hammerhead gunship, he read aloud with mock gravitas. Incredibly, this ridiculous machine is the Tau's main battle tank. Compare its misshapen contours and bizarre angles to the noble profile of the Lehman Russ. It possesses medium armor, with the turret and rear being weak points. Do not be intimidated by the size of the main weapon. It is mainly for show. The discharge is about as effective as a hotshot round from a las gun. Stilgard let the clearly inaccurate words hang between them. They had both seen firsthand, day after day on this unrelenting grind toward Tarakin, the terrible reality this text sought to believe. They had seen far too many Lehman Russ profiles, rendered none too noble by the undeniable power of the Hammerhead gunship's railguns. I don't know about you, Hatch, but I don't like being lied to, you know. See, they land us out here in some emperor forsaken arse end out of nowhere and feed us this gack. And they must think we're dumb or blind or something, because we've got eyes, man. You and me can see it's all just a great steaming pile of- Well, what should it say then? Hadge exploded. Tell me your truth, guardsman. Stilgar was taken aback by the man's sudden outburst of righteous fury. The tower are elusive and deadly hunters. Hadge continued in irate tones. Should you be hunted by Tau Hammerheads, you should flee like a craven for your death is assured, and the Emperor of Mankind cares not a jot for your worthless soul. No, well, that's not why. Stilgar was suddenly very aware how close his argument was coming to heresy. I mean, not the bits about the Emperor, obviously. He backpedaled desperately. No, it says that the Emperor will lend me strength and instill in me hatred enough to vanquish the Tau usurpers. It says that mankind stands on the shoulders of the martyred. It says know your duty. This! Hajj snatched the sacred text from Stilgar's hands and held it up. This is the Emperor's truth, Guardsman. This is faith. This is our hope and our only surety. He preached. And you would have me trade this for what? For fear, for isolation, to narrow my perspective to only that which my own eyes have seen. I will not, for I alone am weak. But the litany of strength says I am a guardsman. Where weakness is death, I will crush my weakness with the weight of my pride. Whence comes your strength if not from faith? What light guides your way? Who are you, man? Alone in a galaxy of cold stars. Stilgar sat silent, driving blind amidst the swirling dust. For a long time he wrestled with the words of his companion, turning them over in his mind, testing his own soul in the crucible of the Emperor's truth. Eventually, Stilgar spoke, though now with less conviction. Just because you say it, doesn't make it so. He concluded. Still, replied Hajj, it is the truth I choose. They spoke no more as the supply column advanced on through the dust. 
nor could Hatch read his primer. His peace had been disturbed. He wrapped a heavy scarf about his face and popped the top hatch angrily. Much to Stilgar's annoyance, the dust got in. The dust got everywhere. Still, Stilgar said nothing. Hatch would disappear up top at intervals, regular as clockwork, to pray or meditate or whatever he might call it. Stilgar had long since given up on trying to understand the man, but he was certainly in no mood to mock today. No sooner had he raised himself up on top than Hadge saw a shadow in the dust. A flitting thing. Unlike any of the lumbering, cumbersome shapes of an Imperial vehicle, he peered hard into the wind, though the sand stung his eyes, and there he caught it. A red eye in the dust cloud. Markalite! He yelled, making for the hatch. He knew he had mere seconds, if it was not already too late. Stilgar slammed the controls hard left on impulse as Hatch tumbled in. He slid past the deadbolt as Stilgar grabbed up the box. Contact, contact! This is Trojan 639er, enemy contact! Supply column gamma, position is... The missile strike was a concussive jolt, which shot the air from its lungs. In a moment of utter chaos and agony, the Trojan lurched and slew its considerable weight over and over again, rolling to a bone-jarring halt, upended in the sand. Stilgar gasped and coughed into life. In the dim blue emergency lighting and with the Trojan's engines choked of life, all was still and eerie silent. Feeling around in desperation, Stilgar found an exit hatch, and pulling himself upright on the handle, he was about to break out when a hand fell on his hip. Hadge was there, his dark eyes glinting, his face a bloody mask, black in the dim blue glow. Wait! He croaked, coughing in the smoky air. The drones! Hadge passed out, either concussed from his head wound, or from loss of blood through some internal injury. Stilgar had no way to tell. As they lay helpless within the wreck, his ears strained for the telltale sounds of small anti-gravitic engines. Tau drones patrolling the kill zone possibly imagined he dared not venture out. Waiting and watching his companion's ragged breathing, Stilgar's eyes fell once again on the Imperial infantryman's uplifting primer lying there beside Hatch's arm. He reached out for the small book and looked up the entry on Tau drones. Tau, combat robots, are called drones. And they take the form of levitating discs, armed with poorly designed pulse carbines, they are <coughs> relatively slow, but their small size makes them a challenging target. Stilgar looked at the Voss pattern lasgun tucked away above the driver's headrest. It was a stubby looking thing with a folding stock and shortened barrel, more suited to close quarters skirmishing than towel drone skeet shooting. Stand up to take aim, the entry continued. Their targeting systems are so woefully inaccurate that you are perfectly safe from harm. Much as he wanted to believe it, Stilgar knew enough to stay put. He was a lousy shot anyhow. He left the lasgun where it was. A high-pitched whine sounded outside, to the left and circling up and over their heads. A drone's anti-gravitic engine unnervingly close, stalking for living prey. Hatch didn't react if he heard it. The Talon was in no fit state to put up any kind of resistance. Stilgar turned to the back pages of the Primer, finding there the litany of protection. Oh, Emperor of Mankind, he read aloud. Send your gaze to me with benevolence. 
Watch over your servant and soldier, and protect him from peril. As Stilgar looked up from the page, he thought he saw on Hatch's face, maybe, the ghost of a smile. <laughs>